Thank you so much for having this so important hearing. Apologize for being late. I'm going to have to run out and then come back in the middle of the next panel uh, in working with the budget issues that we're facing now, trying to help get some of those things sorted out. Mr. M McLennican. Yes, sir. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Good. Very good. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> On a separate issue of alleged toxic, toxic exposure in Arkansas, we have a significant number of Gulf War One. Gulf War I veterans who allege chronic illness uh, due to toxic exposures. Uh, the Arkansas National Guard's 39th Inf Infantry Br Brigade deployed in the Gulf in 1990, 1991. Some of these folks have some real health issues now. Uh, many of these veterans claim that they were exposed to toxic substances like benzene due to the oil fires that the Iraqi military set as with issues like Agent Orange exposure and the Camp Lejeune water contamination situation, it takes a significant amount of time and research to fully grasp the effects and causal connection of such exposure. Can you give me an update? Uh, can you give all of us an update on uh, what efforts the VA is continuing to pursue to help these Gulf War veterans? Since that's a uh, medical science research issue, I'll defer to Dr. Erickson on that. Certainly, thank you for the question, Senator. Um, we, can, we continue to partner with Gulf War veterans, uh, veteran service organizations, in particular the National Gulf War Resource Center, uh, who is head, which is headed up by Mr. Ron Brown. Um, he has worked very closely with us to make sure that our websites are accurate, our newsletters are actually useful by topic. Um, he and uh, his partner, Jim Bunker, have actually recommended uh, to us uh, research that uh, they think is necessary for us to be able to answer some of these questions. And uh, literally, while we sit in this room, the Gulf War Research Advisory Committee, which is a FAC, a Federal Advisory Committee, is, is meeting at VA headquarters right now. And uh, as you probably know, that, that committee, in fact, uh, provides advice concerning the research to fill the gaps uh, for uh, Gulf War illness. Very good. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mr. McLennican, McLennican, with the Camp Lejeune water situation, it's my understanding that the VA representatives went down to North Carolina and explained how the disability claims process worked and the steps that people needed to take in order to file a claim and receive compensation. However, VA added another layer of bureaucracy into the process by adding subject matter experts uh, into the adjudication process. Uh, I guess, you know, I'd like to know if that was correct, and if it is correct, uh, adding these uh, SMEs uh, into the adjudication process is unique to the Camp Le Lejeune situation. Is that uh, correct? And, and then I guess the other question I have is why was this done? Yes. Senator, uh, I would not say it's, it's unique because in every uh, compensation claim that we adjudicate, uh, we are required uh, to obtain, through our duty to assist, an examination or a medical opinion as required to properly adjudicate the claim. Sometimes we'll get private evidence. It doesn't require us to do that uh, through VHA. Um, but if we need an opinion, we often go to VHA and ask for an opinion. Our adjudicators are, are not the medical experts. They're the adjudicators who weigh the evidence that they're given. So I would not say that it's unique that we have individuals providing us that kind, those kind of opinions. However, in this case, recognizing that uh, you know, this is a special issue, we consolidated all those claims uh, down to our Louisville Regional Office. And uh, we did collaborate very closely with the Veterans Health Administration to make sure that we were achieving a level of consistency that these veterans deserve. And, and the way we did that was consolidating in Louisville and then working with VHA to set up a system of these special um, SMEs, subject matter experts, to, uh, to help us with getting those opinions. And I, I think Dr. Erickson could probably talk a little bit more about the SMEs themselves and what their qualifications are. Senator, I'm going to divide this into two pieces. One is the health care law that Senator Burr gave testimony to. The other will be the SMEs as it relates to presumptions. Um, as Senator Burr appropriately said, he pushed legislation that was passed in, in 2012. And uh, when that was enacted on the 6th of August uh, 2012, VA immediately started providing health care for 15 different conditions uh, to Camp Lejeune veterans. And I'm proud to say that to date, uh, we've provided health care to 21,154 <laughs> veterans. Uh, who had served at Camp Lejeune. Uh, of these, 700, I'm sorry, 7,560 of these veterans have been treated specifically for a Camp Lejeune condition that is included in that law. 
Likewise, on the family member side of that, we've had 997 family members who have applied for the program. Uh, again, this program is a little newer. Uh, 176 family members are both administratively and clinically eligible. Uh, to date, there have been uh, 906 family members uh, whose medical claims have been paid for 65 unique uh, family members for a total payout of $176,000. So on the healthcare side, we've moved out smartly on the bill, the legislation that Senator Burr gave testimony to. On the presumption side, yes, there was a need for us to move beyond uh, the cadre of, of compensation and, and pension examiners, such that we would have a group that was more specially trained. Uh, we selected about 20 of these individuals, also in the fall of 2012, made sure that they were residency trained in occupational medicine, environmental medicine, toxicology. Uh, they received, as Mr. McClenaghan said, uh, additional training at uh, the VBA facility in Louisville to make sure they understood the complexity of the issues. Uh, currently, they have regular telephone conferences to discuss cases, especially the more difficult cases, uh, so as to provide a certain level of peer review uh, for those cases. Uh, they also continue to build and work with a comprehensive bibliography, the goal being uh, to reduce variability in the decisions that are made. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Bozeman. Senator Rono has a follow-up.